Crafty family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY project, we'll be creating four lemon themed DIY projects for your home. Now the Dollar Tree has some really cute lemon placemats and other lemon decor that is perfect for summer and I was inspired to create a few easy to make items in a lemon and navy blue theme. Now for your convenience, I provided the list of supplies and tools to use to make these projects in the description box below. Now I'm very excited to share this tutorial with you, but before we start, I wanted to say hello and welcome back to my fantastic subscribers and visitors to my channel. Now if you are a new visitor to my channel today and love to create fun and easy DIY projects on a budget, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also click that notification bell so you will be the first to know when a new DIY tutorial is ready to share with you. So now, let's just jump right into the projects. Now the first project will be a set of lemon wall art. Now for this project we'll need two 8x10 matte style picture frames. And we'll also need two of these lemon photos which are printables provided in the description box below. So now we're going to start off by unpackaging those picture frames and removing all of the inserts from the frame and setting those to the side. Now my picture frames are silver, but for this project I, wanna, I want them to be white so I'm going to go ahead and paint them. Now I will be using this white acrylic paint to do this. Now I'm going to be applying two coats of this paint to the frame and you want to make sure you allow them to dry completely in between the coats. Now once both coats are thoroughly dry, I'm going to apply a layer of this matte Mod Podge to the entire frame and this will seal and protect it. And now that the Mod Podge is set and dry, we can start to assemble our frames. Now the link to these printables are in the description box below and just print them out on white cardstock. Now we're gonna take our dried frames and we wanna carefully insert that glass back into the frames first. Now as you see, the principle is slightly smaller than the frame, so you want to make sure that it's centered. But we're going to place that mat in first, and then replace those foam strips on there if they came off. And then we're going to place your printed photo on top, and we want to make sure it's centered on that mat. And then place that retail photo in the back on the frame, and secure everything in place with the little tabs. Now once everything is in, you can shift and adjust these by lightly tapping the frame if needed. And then once it looks good, repeat this for the other photo and you are done. And here is the pair hung on display. I think these are super easy and they turned out great. Now I really love the combination of the navy blue and the lemons. I think it's so vibrant and cheery. Now I've seen similar pieces online for about $25, so making them yourself is a super money saver. Now project number two is a mason jar lemon decor. Now for this project, we'll need two mason style jars. We'll also need four skewers from this package. We'll all need some lemons, we'll need about four. We'll also need two boxwood bundles of greenery or greenery of your choice, and we'll also use some yellow ribbon. So we're gonna start this project with clean jars, and we're gonna go ahead and start with removing those lids. Now I will be painting these with this deep cobalt blue acrylic paint. Now I will be applying two coats of this paint, making sure that they're drying thoroughly in between those coats. And here are both coats fully dry. And now I'm gonna apply one coat of this matte Mod Podge on top. Now when you apply the Mod Podge, you wanna 
apply in one continuous stroke. And this will eliminate streaks in your finished project. So now that they're both just about dry, we can start on the embellishments. Now I'm going to start by taking those four skewers and I'm going to be painting them with this green color. And then once they are dry, we can start gathering up our other supplies. So I'm gonna grab my lemons, I'm gonna grab my greenery, I'm gonna grab those jars and the ribbon. Now I'm gonna start by cutting two long strips of that ribbon because I'm gonna be wrapping this around the jars. So just tie it around the threads of the jar into a bow and then we're just gonna trim it up on the ends There you go, looks good. So once that's done, we could start adding our fillers to the jars. So after we add our greenery, we're gonna work on the lemons. So we're gonna remove that little green end piece on each one of the lemons and insert that skewer right inside there just until it's secure in place. And then once they're on the skewer, I'm just gonna hold it up to the jar and I'm gonna cut those skewers to fit inside at you know your desired length. Now I did also decide to add some of these wild white wildflowers as well and I got these from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to add a few clippings of those to the jar to finish off the look. And then you just repeat this for your other jar. Now after looking at these on display for a while I thought that highlighting that mason jar emblem would give it a unique look. So I'm taking this old sanding sponge that's worn out that I don't use anymore. I'm going to be applying some acrylic white paint directly to it. It's a hard flat surface and it'll work for stamping. So I'm just going to apply some to there and I'm just going to lightly stamp on that paint to that logo just to kind of highlight it and show the little worn look. And I think it looked good. I was a little heavy handed here, but I think the, the logo shows through really well. And now that everything is dry, we can put these on display and I love how they turned out. Now I think these adorable arrangements would look great on a table display or even sitting in a window. And just to know that these can be made with Dollar Tree items makes this such a sweet deal. Now for project number three, this is a set of decorative pillows. Now I will be using this Dollar Tree placemat to make this pillow. Now I like my pillows to be square rather than oblong, so I'm gonna fold one corner over as shown here to make a square. And then I'm gonna cut off the excess, leaving about a one inch extra to finish it all off. And then I'm gonna fold in that cut edge to the inside. And then I'm just gonna kinda of hold it in place with some of those clips from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. And then once that everything is clipped into place, I'm just going to press down on those folds and kind of crease the fabric to make a seam. Now, I usually would sew this, but since this is a quick and easy tutorial and I don't plan to launder these, I will be using hot glue to do this. So I wanna place some hot glue inside that fold and I wanna just secure it down into place so it doesn't pop up.
Now, once all those seams are in place, we can prepare to stuff the pillow. Now, first I wanna seal that opening about halfway, um, and then I'm going to clip it in place. So I'm just gonna run a bead of glue halfway down and then put some clips into place to hold it. And then I can start stuffing the pillow. Now you wanna place that stuffing and that filler into the corners first, and then fill the remainder of the pillow. And this will eliminate a lot of those gaps in the corners that you may tend to get when stuffing pillows. And once it's all filled, you can go ahead and seal that opening with your hot glue and then clip it into place. And then when it fully dries, just remove all of your clips and fluff it the way you like it and repeat this process with the coordinating placemat that you have. And now that the other pillow is done, you can place them together. And here are the finished pillows ready for your space. Now I really do love that lemon pattern in these and it coordinates really well with the blue pattern. I think these cute little square pillows turned out adorable. Now project number four is a decorated box with a lid. Now for this project, we'll need one placemat from the Dollar Tree and we'll also need one hexagon box with lid. So I'm gonna take my placemat and I wanna cut around all of the sewn edges to separate the layers. So then I take my box and I measured the box's height, which is about four inches. So I took about a five inch estimate uh, for my fabric because I wanted to overlap that edge. And I'm just gonna mark it with a pencil on the fabric and then I'm gonna cut out that strip. So now I'm going to need my strip to be a few inches longer. So I'm laying the end of my strip against that end of the fabric just to try to match up the pattern. But before I adhere it, I wanna go ahead and seal off those edges since it will be lying right on top. And once it's all ready to go, you just wanna glue it right into place. You wanna match up the pattern, and then you wanna apply the hot glue into place. And once those two pieces are hot glued together, just trim it down to match that strip size. So now you can start to add that strip to the box. Now when applying the strip, you wanna make sure that you have enough fabric overlapping each side to fold under later. And just apply hot glue to one side at a time and just secure it in place as you wrap it around the box. Now once you get to the end, you wanna fold under the end so it lines up with a seam. 
and then just crease it and then open it up to hot glue that seam together and then once you do that you can trim off that excess and secure that piece into place So now we can flip it over to the bottom and what I'm going to do is clip the fabric at every corner. And then I'm going to apply hot glue along the bottom edge and fold down and secure those fabric clips to the bottom. Now for the top edge, I'm going to go ahead and seal that with a lighter. And then I'm going to apply hot glue to the inner side and fold in and secure it into place. Now this is optional, but I wanted to cover up that bottom with a scrap of craft paper. I just think it looks so much neater and you know I like a finished look on my projects. So I'm just going to apply hot glue around the bottom of the container and I am going to press that onto the craft paper. And then I'm going to trim off that excess with my X-Acto knife. And now that the box is done, we can start working on the lid. So I'm going to end up painting this with chalk paint, but first I want to cut a piece of this leftover fabric to add to the top as an accent. So I decided I wanted to cut out a square to include four of the designs. And then when you cut it out, I'm gonna seal the edges with a lighter. And then I'm gonna set this to the side and I am going to paint my lid with chalk paint. And you just want to apply a nice thick layer and allow it to dry completely. Now once it does dry, I want to measure and I want to find the center because I plan on putting a knob in the lid. And once you do find that center, I'm just gonna make a small hole with an X-Acto knife. You can also use a drill if you like. And now I'm going to apply my fabric square over that center and I'm going to use my hot glue to secure it into place. Now I did use my X-Acto knife to poke a hole in the center of the fabric. I did end up pulling a thread strand as you can see there, but if you cut a little hole with scissors before gluing the square to the box, you shouldn't have this problem. Now I have this knob from an old cabinet and I'm gonna apply it to the lid. So I'm gonna place that screw inside the box and poke it up through the top and then screw on the knob. Now as a final touch to the box, I wanted to add some of this yellow ribbon to the lid. So I'm just gonna run, um, start by cutting a nice little piece and I'm just gonna run hot glue around the edge, top lid of the box and start applying that ribbon all the way around. Now once you do reach the end, go ahead and trim and seal those edges and then hot glue into place.
and there you go. Now I filled my box with some extra lemons and greenery and here it is on display. Now you can fill this box with whatever decorations that you like, just give it your own personal touch. Now, or you can just simply display it as is, and either way, it will make a beautiful addition to your decor. Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Crafty EE on Facebook for the latest new sneak peeks and giveaways. Thank you so much for visiting and checking out my tutorial today. If you like videos like these and don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below and turning on that notification bell. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you all next time.